Hello there, Joe Fernandez here, and today I'll be going over an interesting topic of PV gear you need for dominating the arenas. As we know, in BFA, PV gear has made a comeback in this expansion, so much so that a lot of gear has made a big difference or simply become mandatory for some classes to grab their hands on. In this guide, we will go over the essential gear picked up from PvE and talk about how they are so good and why you should use them. All this gear will be relevant for extra tankiness, healing and even damage, so it's important to use whatever helps you in these areas for your compositions. So trinkets play a massive part in using overpowered gear for arena games. There are plenty of excellent trinkets for PV for all uses, which can seriously change the scenarios during a match. First off, we will split these trinkets in terms of tanky, healing and DPS trinkets, explaining why they are good and when you will use them. There are two main healing trinkets that you can get from PvE, which are considerably valuable and give an incredible boost to healing. These are Ward of the Envelopment and Zoetroid Egg Sack. Ward of Envelopment is simply an overpowered trinket that you can even use whilst locked out, giving you and your partners in range a massive undispellable shield, giving a ton of extra healing. This trinket is quite easily available from Battle of Dalzaro Law, first boss of Mythic, which can be easy to pug even though it's only 415 item level, it's probably the best healing trinket in the game and is well worth investing time and effort to pick up. Any and all healers should use this trinket when needing the extra healing throughput to deal with a ton of damage. Using Ward of Envelopment in dire situations can seriously improve your chances of surviving. The dire situation here is when the hunter gets put into a kidney and bomb at half HP and could easily flop at this moment in time. So the druid reacts by using Trank for the hot then uses the Ward of Envelopment Trinket, which as you can see goes through the bomb, absorbing a ton of damage. This allows the Hunter to continue his aggression, looking for a trap, and send the Rogue running instead. Zotroid's Egg Sack is another good healing trinket that can be used on one target to help out topping off their HP. It can be used by all healers again, which could be taken if needing more throughput than Ward of Envelopment, or if you have no access to this trinket, and require more healing throughput to deal with oppositions that have immense pressure. This trinket drops from Orgazo which means you'll need to raid Eternal Palace in order to get this trinket, making it more difficult to get in comparison to Ward of Envelopment. However, if you do raid in Mythic, then you could get access to a 445 version of this trinket, which would increase its power immensely, as higher item levels on these types of trinkets means it will heal more. Those are all the healing trinkets that are great for extra throughput. Now, we can get into the damaging trinkets that add extra burst or constant pressure against your enemies. There are four top DPS trinkets from PvE in ascending order are number one, Rock Crusted Voodoo Doll, number two, Shiver Venom Relic, number three, Ascended Alchemist Stone, and number four, Lady Waycrest's Music Box. So, Rock Crusted Voodoo Doll is an immensely powerful DPS trinket, dealing a ton of extra damage and burst due to the nature of the trinket. For that reason, it's strong for all casters, giving you on demand damage as well as burst damage, creating easier kill potentials when used well. It's also incredibly strong for Disc Priests due to it being affected by Schism, making it deal absurd damage. Here showcases the Voodoo Doll Totem by itself with no extra damage, chunking a Druid's HP by 20% alone. Now, here is the Voodoo Doll Trinket in conjunction with Schism and Dark Archangel, which doubles the amount of damage it does in comparison to just using the Trinket. Shiver Venom Relic is another excellent trinket which can deal high burst during the on use aspect of it. At 5 stacks you want to use it to deal big burst damage in order to slaughter your enemies. Again, this is great for all casters and ideal for Discipline Priests, especially in 2v2. Using this during Schism as a Disc Priest can deal crazy damage, likely to overwhelm enemies, forcing huge defensive cooldowns or simply getting quick kills. In this clip, we see exactly how Mare is able to annihilate his opponents with disc cooldowns and PvE trinkets. Before he begins his burst, he lands a schism on his target, whilst he has 5 stacks of Shinna Venom up as well. He then immediately pops Dark Archangel as soon as he lands the schism, knowing the Windwalker has no access to Touch of Karma. During his burst damage, he uses instant spells, making it unstoppable, and then he finally uses his Shiver Venom Relic trinket on use, finishing off the the job.
The Ascended Alchemist Stone is a solid choice for all damage dealers as it's very similar to the Insignia PvP Trinket but it comes with a socket and higher base item level making it a solid trinket. You'll want this mainly as any damage user when you want a bunch of extra versatility to reduce your damage taken. Nothing too exciting going on here but it's a nice trinket to have if wanting a passive trinket. Lastly you can also use Lady Waycrest's Music Box which is actually both a healing and damaging trinket. It can be used for healing that deal constant damage, such as Resto Drizzle Disc Priests in 2v2, when you can pump pressure the entire game. You won't really use this trinket for the extra heal throughput, just more so if you want constant pressure the entire game, so you may not use this trinket too much, but it can definitely help and be critical in these situations. As you can see, in an average lengthy 2v2 game, the enemy Disc Priest dealt nearly 10% damage alone from the trinket, outshining a lot of other damaging abilities passively. Stating the obvious, this trinket drops from Waycrest Manor, which also means it can drop from your weekly Mythic Plus chest, being able to get a 440 version of it. Now we can move on to the tanky trinkets, which are trinkets that can reduce damage or help out with extra self survivability by a ton. So tanky trinkets are absurdly powerful right now and can make classes that are easy to kill much more difficult. The main trinkets that you'd want to use for increased self healing are Bloodthirsty Urchin, Lingering Spore Pods, and Subroutine Defragmentation. Bloodthirsty Urchin gives an extra ton of consistent self healing, making it an excellent choice for any agility or strength wearer that really needs the extra survival. This trinket drops from Lady Ashvane, with a 430 heroic version being more than efficient enough for high level arena content. Picking up a 445 version will also be huge and very worth it if you are able to get your hands on one. Lingering Spore Pods also works in the same fashion as Bloodthirsty Urchin, giving a ton of extra self healing, being excellent for any agility and strength users that need it for surviving. The only issue with this trinket is that unlike the others, it can be dispelled too. This makes it more of a liability against teams that have access to purge mechanics. Although it should still be used as it will still give a lot of healing and can protect other important buffs as well. Lingering Spore Pods drops from Underrod, meaning you can easily pick up a 430 eye level version of it by doing a Mythic 10 or over in order to get it, making it the most accessible tank trinket from PvE. It can also drop from your weekly caches if you have a tank spec active Activated, which can be done by all agility or strength wearers apart from enhanced shamans or hunters. As you can see, both of these trinkets used together can make you extremely tanky. In this screenshot, we can see an arms warrior with both, whom would usually have very low self-healing normally. With the help of these two tank trinkets, arms warriors become extremely durable and hard to kill. Again, these trinkets could and should be used for any agility or strength wearer if your gameplay evolves around living and winning and dampening by surviving well. Well, last but not least, we have Subroutine Defragmentation. This is a punch card that you can put into your pocket sized computation device trinket. This is also just like the other two tank trinkets, but it's a bit harder to get. You have to do hard mode mecha gong, and it is a rare drop, not as common as the other two trinkets, which is why it's not seen as much. It's just as good as the other trinkets, and again, can be taken by any classes rather than just agility or strength wearers, making this trinket good for any class that needs the extra self survivability. That covers all the trinkets, which is a big part of PvE gear you need in order to dominate the arenas. Using the right ones in the right matchup can easily change the game, giving you more favourable odds. Now we can move on to other PvE items, mainly weapons important for certain classes or specs. As for weapons, there aren't too many valuable ones here, meaning most classes will just farm whichever weapons give their best stats. However, there are a few weapons that are incredibly strong for certain classes, making them worthwhile to pick up. They can be very very strong and used over higher item eye level weapons or if you're lucky receive a higher item level version of these weapons. These main weapons that are very strong from PV are Getaku, Cut of Death, Diver's Folly and Bile Stained Krog Tusks. This beastly two-handed weapon is widely known as the best two-handed weapon in the game. As such, it is best in slot for all two-handed melee DPS players, with the 430 item level version of this weapon surpassing all 440 item level weapons. It deals great damage in the form of an undispellable dot, making it most likely unavoidable and adding to your pressure constantly. Against the Destro Wall of Restodruid, this usually can be quite a difficult comp to kill relatively early on. Not only do I reflect the Chaos Bolt, but whilst the lock is low, my cut of death procs on the warlock. 
I then pre-war banner the bash, allowing me to keep up to the lock and land an easy kill thanks to the help of Cut of Death. This is quite a common damage breakdown of Cut of Death, although it is highly random with how much it procs. It usually will do quite a chunk of your DPS no matter what class you play, averaging between 6 to 10% of your total damage done. Cut of Death drops from King's Rest, making it easily farmable if you're able to spam plus 10 mythic keys of it. You could also randomly get a 440 version of it in your weekly chest box, making them highly worth to do. That leaves us with the two one-handed weapons, being Diver's Folly and Bile Stained Krog Tusks. Both of these one-handers are favourable for any one-handed melee DPS users. There's not much difference between these two choices and either one can be used. Bile Stained Krog Tusks will be the best DPS wise, although it has nature damage, meaning it can be dispelled, making it lose out on some damage. This weapon drops from Underar as well, making it very farmable if you have access to plus 10 Underar keys, or can simply RNG it from a weekly chest loot. Diver's Folly will deal less DPS, but it is still powerful at giving extra damage as well as being easy to pick up. There's not much difference from these two choices and either one can be used. Diver's Folly drops from the second boss of the Eternal Palace Raid, making it quite easily accessible as most people can pug heroic as well as even mythic, so you could receive a 445 item level version of this weapon. Either way, having both of these weapons or at least one can increase your damage by a bit. They won't be as devastating as the Cut of Death, but they add a nice bit of damage. Here's an example of an average game against a demon hunter. As you can see it did 5% of Tren's overall damage which did more damage than his demon blades. For now there's only one notable piece of PV gear worth getting for dominating arena outside of weapons and trinkets, being the leggings of the aberrant tide surge. These are last raid tier leggings but are also incredibly powerful for all leather wearers, giving you a ton of extra damage especially for resto or feral druids and demon hunters. Similar to cut of death it probably very randomly, ranging a lot in how much damage it does overall in a game. Although instead of it being dot based, it deals instantaneous damage in one go, chunking down your enemy very easily. It can also give a bit of extra healing when lower on HP, which is a nice little extra bonus when you are vulnerable to dying. Here is an extreme situation that can happen but it is rare. A demon hunter with a 445 item level version of these legs, getting a massive 6 procs in what appears to be a very quick game. The Nimbus Bolt tops damage by far and as you can see, hits for an average of 50k, which is an absurd amount of damage. This drops from the first boss in Crucible of Storms, making it quite easily accessible as it's a raid tier behind of the current patch. You'd ideally want a mythic version, which is harder to get, but the item levels seriously advance gear like this to do more damage. So that's it on PV gear you need to dominate the arenas. Make sure to plus skill this guide if it helped and feel free to leave any questions or comments down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.